Hello and welcome to the US Futures Weekly Chart Analysis for the week ending 18th of November 2022. The first chart is the US Dollar Index Futures. Just put in some lines. This is the most recent breakdown line here at 109 roughly. Now this week you can see the bar pushed lower below the previous bar's low and volume reduced slightly but still remained a fraction above average. So this wasn't selling pressure that reduced, this was buying support that came in. Buying support adjacent to this congestion to the left back in July, August of this year. Buying support came in and that then allowed price to push up and close as a slight up bar for the week. So this was a fairly positive bar. You've seen buying support come in. We'll look at this market again a little bit later. The E-mini S&P, this is the S&P 500 index futures. Recent support down here. Previous support to the left, price broke out more recently and there's a minor level just here. This is the more important level above. You can see price has pushed above this minor breakdown line the previous week. Now volume reduced to well below average. So when the market attempted to move higher this week, there was no demand for the upside. The upside wasn't being supported. The market was wanting to test for supply. And the reduced volume suggests that selling pressure was low as price came back. This will allow for this market to push higher in response if there's support for the upside. And if not, you'll likely get some sort of secondary test for supply. Something that looks something like this while the market decides which way it's going to go. US Treasury 10-year note futures. Here is the important level through here. There's a secondary level just above that through there. It's a little bit messy with the top of this bar here. You can see price pushed up to this level two weeks ago and made an attempt to move higher this week on an increase in volume. Supply has been drawn out. Supply has been drawn out this week and that's kept the spread very narrow and the close poor down by the low of the bar. Now, all's not lost. The close was adjacent to the previous close. So although supply came in, the market was strong enough to hold on pretty much adjacent to the previous close. When supply is drawn out like this, the response is almost always some form of test for supply. If there's not a test for supply in response to supply being drawn out, then you have to wonder why the market is so impatient. And that's a concern in itself. If the market's forcing itself higher when you would normally expect a test for supply, then there's usually a reason for it and it's usually unsustainable. So the market will nearly always test for supply in response to supply being drawn out like it was last week. And... You would expect this, even if it's only for a day or so next week, prior to any attempt to move higher or any breakdown. If supply continues to be drawn out, price will push lower, there's no doubt. It won't close back up like this. It will push lower and close down here like this. So the market will normally test for supply in response and it will move then depending on how much supply is drawn out. Copper price futures have been very resilient recently. Here's the important levels. And price broke out above them clearly last week. But disappointingly, price has come back fairly deeply this week on reduced but well above average volume. I was expecting this market to perhaps attempt to consolidate up in a sort of a level through here like this. But price has come back considerably further than that, probably 
of the push higher, if that's the push higher. And at the 50% level, this market perhaps isn't as strong as it might appear. That doesn't mean it's weak. That just means it wasn't as strong as I thought it might well have been with all the resilience that had been shown through here. I was expecting the market maybe a little bit stronger than it's actually proving to be. But let's just wait and see. Supply has been drawn out. Price still did trade within the range of the previous bar through here. So certainly all's not lost. It's traded as an inside bar this week. But a little more volume was drawn out as price came back than I might have expected. And spread was a little wider than was perhaps expected. So let's just see what we get next week. Similar to the other markets, you're probably likely to see an early test for supply like this. And then the market will move depending on how much supply is drawn out. If supply continues to be drawn out, it'll continue lower. If not much supply is drawn out, it'll trade sideways and close just like that, or perhaps even attempt to push higher. Gold price futures. Gold price futures found support recently and showed some resilience similar to the copper market, perhaps not as strong as the copper market, but still did a pretty good job. And the response was seen last week with a good push higher. Now, this market has attempted to consolidate right up in the highs of the range. Here's the range we're looking at. And the higher up within that range, the market does consolidate, the stronger this market is likely to be. And price had a very narrow spread this week. You can see it was a brief attempt to move higher here. But the market wasn't supporting higher prices this week. It was wanting to consolidate in response to the strong push higher the previous week. So price came back and is effectively testing for supply. Volume wasn't low. It was above average still, but it was reduced over the previous bar. This suggests that buying support is coming in. This suggests that the market is buying what supply is being drawn out in response to the push higher previously. And that's a pretty good sign that there's underlying positive sentiment in this market. Now, similar to the other markets, the most likely response, especially on a weekly basis, is for a test for supply and then a movement depending on how much supply is drawn out. It's a common theme, but the market tests for supply all the time. Even if it's just an intraday test, you see it a lot when markets overlap a bar. Here's a good example here if you're looking for what goes on. Price came back here. This part of the next bar was the test for supply. Supply was found to be low. And in response, prices pushed higher to close as an up bar for the week. Happens all the time. Next chart is silver price futures. Here's the lows of the range. Here's the previous breakdown line. And there's the breakdown line prior to that. We know that support came in through here. Price moved higher and pushed above this breakdown line. Now, the market has, similar to gold and copper, moved slightly higher this week, but didn't find any support for the upside and instead came back and tested for supply. Volume was reduced, but it was still above average. The spread was a little wider than you might really like for it to be very strong. I expect this breakout line, which is the old breakdown line, this breakout line will probably be tested for strength next week. And you'll get price come back and test at this level. And then it will depend on how much supply is drawn out. If supply continues to be drawn out and price is forced back below the breakdown line, there's likely to be support adjacent to where the market previously found support within this congestion zone. But if supply is found to be low, you might find price pops back up and trades back around the 21.22 in here. Light crude price futures. 
have been a little inconsistent more recently. Here's the lows of the range. You can see price broke down on this bar and price attempted to find support at that level but broke down again on this bar. A lack of selling pressure was seen here and that allowed this bar to push higher and altogether this forms a nice little reversal here and that may be significant for the future. You can see that since this reversal has taken place, price has traded within the range of that reversal. And even though this week pushed lower on an increase in volume, the lows of this little range were respected. Price bounced off it and closed just above it. So at this point, this level is being respected and this reversal is still being respected. So this week's bar really was a minor breakdown. It was a breakdown of this trading here and price has pushed below the lows of that little range, but it has found support adjacent to these lows. So we'll see how the market goes this week, similar to the other markets. Early in the week, you'll probably see this and then you'll see the market respond depending on how much supply is drawn out. Aussie dollar currency futures attempted to push higher this week, but the low volume suggests there was no demand for higher prices. Instead, the market came back and tested for supply and found that selling pressure was relatively light. There'll be an attempt to support at this level next week. You'll likely see this. And then you'll see price move depending on how much supply is drawn out. Bitcoin futures. Bitcoin futures had a bit of an ordeal the previous week. Price pushed lower on a strong increase in volume due to some issues with exchanges and price closed well below the lows of the current range. This week saw price attempt to consolidate. Volume was very low. This means that while there was no demand for the upside or there was no demand for higher prices, activity or selling pressure also reduced this week. This is the key level to watch in the near term. It's approximately 16,000. A clear break below that level would likely see positions that were accumulated within this trading range dumped and that would seriously push price lower. While those positions remain held, the market's likely to be fairly stable and has a good chance of holding on around this 16,000 level. I would expect after such a violent fall the previous week, the market will probably trade sideways for at least a period while the market attempts to stabilise and recover from the issues that are surrounding this market just at the moment. So look for price to move roughly sideways, hopefully above the 16,000 level or not far below it. It will take a clear push below that level for anything serious to happen. But if there is a clear push below that level, the next lower level to look for is around 10,000. It's sort of between 8 and 12,000, centred around the 10,000 level. So you're looking for a price just to move sideways, preferably above 16,000, while it recovers and stabilises a bit in response to the recent issues. Just back to the US dollar index futures quickly. Put the lines in. Here's the breakdown line, previous highs. You've seen buying support come in adjacent to this congestion to the left. Now, to the upside, this is the first level that you'd want to see price recover above before you became positive about this market. This is a breakdown bar here, and this is the breakdown line here. This is the first level where if price got back above that level, you could consider this market becoming more positive again. I like these little junctures here where price broke down from. 
This isn't a perfect example of it, but there's also a level through here where there'll be some resistance and the previous highs will also form resistance. So these are the three levels to overcome if price is going to push back higher again in response. The breakdown line comes through here, just below 105, and you've also got the lows of this week's bar and the previous low through there. A break below those levels would see price move back down probably to this level and test it for supply. So you've had buying support come in this week. You may see price move sideways for a bar or two while it recovers from the breakdown on this bar. You may see something like this for a bar or two. And if the buying support is strong, I would expect price to push up towards this 109 level and perhaps make a challenge to it. If selling pressure is ongoing and strong, you will see price come back to this 104, 105 level and perhaps break below it. And if it does, you're looking around the 101, 101.5 level. Okay, that's it for this week. Thanks for joining me. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. We'll do it all again next week. Thank you. See ya.